Ooh, I got a spicy news and reviews for you tonight. This is gonna be a juggle work. Uh. All right, cover this story a few times here on the show. So we're going back to that game Elden Ring. Everybody was so fucking crazy about that. Uh, was so crazy about it. I don't even know if people are still crazy about it. Who's fuck? Anybody? Anybody play fucking Elden Ring? Anybody fucking play Elden Ring? Let me know. Let me know in the chat if you play Elden Ring. Anyway, so I'll cover this story before. This is from Polygon. Uh, dot com and we covered that fucking uh guy or girl <clears throat> that's called let me solo her and well apparently they got a real fucking sword from bandai Namco and from software on wednesday client toshiba the person behind the infamous let me solo her account in elder ring posted an image on twitter of a gift he received from software and bandai Namco. The blocks included some Elder Ring themed items and a special message from the from the publisher and developers. A wooden portrait of Melina, and most importantly, a sword. The message, which features a drawing of Let Me Solo host character, congratulations to Sobo on their uh, th hundred hundred thousand Melina kill and milestone that hit in May. The sword simply says "Rise Tarnished" on the blade. That's insane, and that is so fucking awesome. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta love fucking game companies. Look at that shit. Reward the fucking fans. And I, I don't know anything about this person. I don't know if they're on, they were on social media being all like, I'm fucking, you know, I'm, I'm still standing. I just wanted to show you that I'm still fucking doing the standing. Hey, <laughs> power pose. I almost dropped that shit. That shit would have been bad. But anyway, that's that's a nice touchy story. Let me know in the chat in the comments below what you fucking think. Are you jelly? Anybody jelly? You didn't do what they did, right? What we got next? We got next fucking stretching over here. All right, got some news on the Master Chief Collection. Only good Halo to play these days, that's for sure. Well. This article from Windows Central Death Count 343 collaborating with community monitors to restore cut content to the Halo Master Chief Collection. So flash forward, uh, what is it, 2000, when the Halo 2 come out? Well, you, you flash forward to the, I don't know what the fuck this article is, not the same article, anyway. They're trying to restore the cut content you saw in, uh, the Halo 2 trail, the first Halo 2 trail, the big city. So they're trying to put that back, but unfortunately in the article it mentions, you know, they, they are bringing us the Master Chief Collection, but right now only for PC, because it would probably be way more harder asset-wise, I guess, for the console, but that kind of sucks. What do you guys think? Would you be interested in playing cut Halo 2 and Halo 1 content that was originally intended for the game, but was cut? That's kind of a mixed bag, you know? Sometimes, shit get cut. Cause they don't got enough time which was the case for halo 2 but sometimes shit gets cut because it's not good but i guess part of history you get access to it i don't know i would i would play it i'll be morbidly curious i don't know let me know the chat i think the the standing up thing uh is over right something went off there how much you play this the, the no standing up thing Oh, 20 minutes? Yeah, it's not done. It's probably 10 more minutes to go on that fucking shit. Anyway, let me know in the chat in the comments below what you, what you think about cut. Hey, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh boy. This might explain the weird interview I had to fuck just right now. Yeah, I remember the... What is this shit called? The, uh... Large Adrian Collider? Well, the other day, namely Tuesday, they apparently turned this fucking thing on. If you're not familiar with it, <laughs> buckle up. On Tuesday, the world's largest particle accelerator was turned on once again, and after two years of upgrades and maintenance, it immediately observed three exotic particles for the first time. The Large Hadron Collider is now up and running, breaking records for the highest energy particle collisions ever performed. It's all pretty exciting with teams involved searching for more information on the so-called God Particle. 
Higgs boson and the signs of dark matter. But of course, some conspiracy theorists out there have concerns that Collider will open a gateway to hell or a parallel dimension from when there's no return. Let's read some of these conspiracy theories. So, nobody else concerned that the CERN Collider will be turning on July 5th and opening up a portal and letting some dark-sided shit come through? July 5th, CERN, it's time to get right with God and protect your energy. On July 5th, we will be feeling a sudden shift in the universe and we feel like we have changed timelines. Do your research on CERN. If you think things are being weird, it's about to feel even weirder. Protect your energy at all costs from that negative shit. Meditate. Ah. Boy, oh boy. CERN has always been a subject of various conspiracy theories from the creation of the black holes to human sacrifices on the ground. First of this year's conspiracy theories have been watching a little too much Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, am I right? <laughs> it wasn't even the Multiverse of Madness. It didn't live up to the name. It didn't live up to the name. It didn't live up to the name. And I'm, I'm hearing Thor's not good. I don't know. I'm gonna go watch Thor tomorrow. Thor's not good. I don't know what we're doing. I, I, I mean, Doctor Strange wasn't bad, you don't get Sam Raimi, but like, it wasn't the multiverse madness, anyway. We've been feeling weird since Tuesday, they turn on a fucking machine. That's located over by the U of UK, and this fucking machine is gonna be the next, next fucking thing we're gonna have to deal with. They're gonna open the fucking Stranger Thing upside down world, they're gonna fucking rewrite our deal, who the fuck knows what's gonna happen. But I can tell you one thing, I did feel off on Tuesday. Very fucking off. So let me know in the channel comments below on Tuesday. Did you did, where things have been weird for you? Let me know. Nothing much I could do about it. But we can talk about it. Sometimes. Sometimes talking is not a bad thing. Nope. Sometimes it's nice to talk. But nothing. Sometimes not, you know, you don't gotta fucking talk. Sometimes you don't gotta fucking talk about that. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. And I totally forgot to add that on here. But yes, I saw that. James Can, legendary actor. I'm reason you're not familiar with him. He was the you know, one of his favorite roles in The Godfather. Uh, he was. Will uh, Elf's dad? Don't make a fucking roast. So, R.I.P. to James Khan. Losing a lot of great ones lately. A lot of great ones. Speak. Oh, wow, this is a good segue. Speaking of other dimensions, the Duffer Brothers, the creators of the Stranger Things series, have opened their own company, folks. Hello? Who's there? I guess no one's there. No one's there. I don't know what that was about. Anyway, let's get back to the Duffer Brothers. Oh, oh, fuck. It's Toby. 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 I'm trying to talk about the Duffer. All right. They made a company. So I got to do this. Is it, uh, uh, Jesus, Toby. Get some help, man. The Duffer Brothers, the creators behind Stranger Things are <laughs> Toby. You gotta stop doing this, Toby. Oh, God. They made their own company. They're working on the Stranger Things spinoff and Stephen King's Talisman series. And I think there's a Stranger Things play they're gonna fucking make. Don't fucking laugh at me. I laugh at me. I do it. Not you. Don't ever do that a fuck again. Fucking okay, I don't know, Duffer Brothers. What, what else? Fucking Stranger Things. Fucking guy wanna fucking laugh at me. I don't fucking know this guy. Guy. What are we talking about? Well, it's been confirmed that Charlie Cox's Daredevil Vincent DeFarfio's Kingpin will be in Marvel's Echo series. 
as to what reasoning there are there is no reason to just confirm that they're in it uh Uh, according to how reporter Cox and the firm reprised the roles they played in the Netflix Marvel series Echo, confirming long standing rumors about the return. Marvel did not prior comment to the island, which is generally considered a highly reservable source for the news. The article also knows that the show has a plot that sees Daredevil looking for a former ally. And just who was that made clear, though, there have been recent rumors that the show will set up a return for Jessica Jones. Oh. Listen, I am. Um... So happy they got Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio on these roles. To me, they cemented themselves forever as those roles. I can never see anyone else as unless they did like a different fucking take or something. I don't know. I cannot see anyone be Matt, Matt Murdock, Daredevil as Charlie Cox. I cannot see anyone be Kingpin as Vincent D'Onofrio, who gave. Both, we got both when when a, when an actor sh just like shows you layers and range of a character you know they fucking cement that shit folks they fucking cement that i'm excited for the return you know they announced the show too they're already working on the new daredevil show so i just am worried of them ruining a good thing that's all i'm worried it's such that that show is so such a fucking high standard i don't i don't they, they really can't shut your thoughts who the fuck fought it doctor you better take down the next fucking room don't ever let that shit happen again in my fucking presence you fucking fought the rude ass asshole not a shot they're gonna show up in echo you know king in the comics kingpin took care of echo so there's, there's a lot of daredevil history with echo We'll see. Try to get more of them. God of War. Well, you fuckers. You got your way, kind of. Well, this week it was announced that God of War Ragnarok will be coming November 9th of this year. And there is a CG trailer and a behind the scenes opening box for the stuff. And I will check that out later. Actually, I haven't checked it out. Um. But this is kind of weird because like last week I was talking about all the fucking harassment fans are giving developers on Twitter and then they get what they want. I don't know. I'm kind of fucked up. I'm kind of fucked up. I would have waited a little. I would have. I would have waited one more. We got this. You fucking Papa. You gotta go. You better go check yourself, Papa. Check that stuff. No, no one was gonna play the two many cooks. Two many cooks. You get more. You get more cards. I give you a five pack of cards. Five pack of cards. What else I got for you? What's going on? <laughs> Fucking Halloween ends. You know we don't. We haven't got a, a poster. We we. We haven't got a, a, a fucking trailer yet. You know, fans are already attacking Jason Bloom on Twitter. It seems like. That's the world today. Bet you cry and get what you want. Yeah. People bitch about Halloween's end, so maybe they'll get a trailer. But anyway, we got a little tidbit from John Coppola. With the, with the release just three months away, the marketing campaign for Halloween ends will begin very soon. Michael's return to the date and theater record will release October 14th, 2022. Speaking with Sci-Fi Wire this week, John Carpenter, who composed the score alongside Cody Carpenter and Daniel Davis, provides his own little tease while you wait. This is a quote from John Carpenter himself, the man, the myth, the legend. You'll see it's a departure from the others. It's interesting dave is a really good director i love working with him carpenter tells the site playing it coy as always nick castle the original mike myers had recently noted that the halloween ends would be a surprising conclusion to david gordon green's new trilogy while makeup effects artist chris nancy similarities that the third of stars in the trilogy is weird and different all these descriptions line up with what is being a departure which has piqued our interest The what? This makes me think I get my Loomis Force Ghost wish considering I have no faith in the film. Well, I mean, they, they, they've kind of already did Loomis with that little uh, cameo on the second one with a different actor, which was fine. It wasn't overdone. Um, here's here, You know what? Here's my take. This popped in my head when I, when I was reading this. Um, I think that Halloween Ends is going to be 
a character study of Michael Myers. But they're not going to have him talk. They're not going to have him cry. He's going to show no emotion, but the only thing we know him by is death. I want Ghost Loomis. Fuck it. Turn this shit goofy. <laughs> yeah, he, he would be Pumpkin. Pumpkin Ghost Loomis. That's what he would be. But think about it. I feel like they keep saying it's weird. It's interesting. And I think what's going to happen is... Um, fuck. What is... Car 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 Karen Schrode is going to trap Michael Myers. I feel like she's going to build another thing with her daughter and they're just going to like f fuck with him. Or, or they're going to be trapped. It's going to be something. It's going to be something very intimate because Halloween Kills was just all out. I think Halloween Ends is going to bring it closer, personal. I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. We'll see. Maybe that's why they're holding back on the trailer. They're like, Oof, we don't know how to advertise this. It's not a lot of, you know, it's probably not a lot of killing or something. I don't know. There is a four year time jump, which is another interesting thing. Does, does Laurie showed uh, find an old Michael Myers? He was pretty old there. Is he just in a wheelchair with his mask? Still trying to do it and takes pity on him. I don't know. I'm really, I'm really intrigued. It's gonna go either way. Like you said, it could go full goofy or it could be, you know, we'll see. Halloween ends. Let me know. Let me know. Yeah, we got this fucking ass expensive Lego Bowser. How much was this shit? This shit is 2,807 fucking pieces. Jeez Louise. How much is this shit? How much is this fucking shit? Alright, let's play a game. I got the price. I'm not gonna say it. Closest to the price? Get some cards. I'm feeling fucking a little but a little butter. <laughs> Even though I was just telling you I'm fucking broke. <laughs> Alright, uh how much you think this Lego Bowser goes for? How much y'all think? Closest one to the price. Get some fucking cards. Get some cards. So how much? Let me know in the chat how much we're doing prices right. Step on now, we're playing Price is Right. This is like Price is Right. Price is Right. <laughs> Hold up, everybody, keep doing prices. I'm, I'm gonna, 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 but, 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 three, 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 three. I need to play my Price is Right sound. I got a Price is Right sound effect. So we'll we'll play that fucking card. Well, may I... I think he says a dollar? Did you say a fucking dollar? Hey, you said a fucking dollar? Are you being fucking... Hey, come on, bro. You want no fucking cards? Do you not want no fucking cards? If you don't want no fucking cards, it's okay. It's okay, man. You don't need to cut the... You got a lot of cards. I don't know. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't... I'm so fucking high. Why did I think this was a good idea? Why did I think this was a good idea? Why did you guys let me do this? What am I doing? I'm trying to find a price is right. I typed the fucking thing in. It don't even come out. Now I gotta fucking read. I gotta fucking read right now. I gotta fucking read. I gotta fucking. What do we do? The. 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 You know what? I probably, if I fucking. All right, whatever. I give up. I got, I just choose the random sound. I get close to the dollars. I get close to the dollars. That is loud. All right, let's see. Who's the closest? All right, everyone put it, everyone put in there. We got a uh, Doctor Daddy says three hundred. Doc Awkward says two ninety nine because he's a troll. Um, Sneaky says sixty and sixty one. So you're playing the troll card. All right, give me your final prices right now on how much you think this Lego Bowser is. If if you're new here and you're playing around playing for Streamloot's cards, I'll give you free Streamloot's cards. It's free to sign up to the site. 
can even sync up your Twitch thing, so. Everyone post their final prices right fucking now. I'm gonna do another headline. Oh, this is a doozy. I was just covering, uh, you know, that Marvel's Avengers game that me and, uh, the doctor here wasted $100 on. And... You know, they just recently added Lady Thor, who was just an Echo character of Thor. Well, during a fucking Xbox Live stream, it's a random streamer and one of the devs of uh, Crystal Dynamics, my man that was talking to him le literally leaked that She-Hulk is next because he was like, yeah, my friend's the voice actor. She's really excited and all this. And then the, you could, I couldn't find the fucking footage. The footage was with other fucking Twitch streamers. But you can tell the developers just like, um, yeah, we, we haven't, we haven't said any, anything about that. We haven't mentioned that. that. It was hilarious. It's so bad. So it looks like She-Hulk's coming to Avengers. Is she just going to be a, a Echo character? We'll see. I don't fucking know. Anyway, let's see the prices. All right. We got Sneaky with 270. Motherfucker. I think Sneaky literally Googled it. Sneaky, did you Google it? Well, you know what? It was two sixty nine ninety nine. So you fucking lost. And Doc Awkward is the winner. Doc Awkward is the winner. I'm sorry. Two sixty nine ninety nine. Sorry, he got it on the dollar. <laughs> you had enough time to Google that. I'm gonna give you more cards that you're not gonna use. They both go well. I, in Doc Ogg's defense, if you look back, he was he was every guy every price you guys did he did a dollar less. He did look at the prices he put. I was paying he was playing them a dollar less. So he was playing he was playing ten piece chess or some shit. I don't know. All right, your cards are sent again. The Maybe use them, fucking asshole. Anyway, Chio is coming to Marvel's Avengers. They don't care. What else we got? Another fucking dead game. <laughs> well, with the cards, you could blame me. Just looked it up. It's two seventy when it launched on October first. Well, and I, it's two sixty nine ninety nine. Sneaky. We're well, gonna take. You're gonna take. You're gonna take us to court. You're gonna take us to fucking court. I'll give you cards too. Yeah, I'll give me fucking cards too. This fucking guy wants to go to fucking court. I'm gonna go to fucking court over here. I'm ta I'm taking my stream and it's, it's taking. <laughs> I'm taking every fucking time this guy. I sent you the cards. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what, what are we talking about? You, everybody remember Red Dead Online? Well, it's fucking dead. It's fucking dead. Rockstar just came out and said, hey. They just came, the only dead came out and said, hey, by the way, uh, it, it, we're not going to be adding anything big to Red Dead Online. We're, we're working on GTA 6. Uh, we'll add like a little bit of missions and tweaks there, but uh, we'll, we'll be adding GTA 6, GTA Online. So, uh, thanks for buying our game. Campaign was great, wasn't it? Did you buy it for the online or something? That's fucking stupid. You stupid. Uh, Red Dead Online is, is dead, which, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I covered the story here on the show last episode, but there was a the community of Red Dead Online was going to have an in-game funeral because I think uh, a couple days ago, it was the ye one year anniversary since Red Dead Online got its last major online update. A year. <laughs> Wow, I feel, I honestly feel bad. If you were a fan of Red Dead Online, let me stop with the laughing. And you held on for a fucking year, hoping, dying for something, some new content to your favorite game. I no, I I honestly I honestly relate because that's how I felt with Mortal Kombat 11. Sure, we have a few little uh, updates and stuff. But it just died. It just died. There was Melina and Rambo and Rain. 
And that was it. We never heard of anything else. We heard teases and rumors of another contact pack or more characters or levels. Michael Myers is supposed to be in it. Ash from Evil Dead. I would have fucking shit for Ash from Evil Dead in Mortal Kombat. Hopefully one day, I don't know. Got, he's got his own fucking game. What you got your own fucking game? Oh, okay. <laughs> the fucking music we're starting. What are we doing? Red Dead Online is dead. Red Dead Online is dead. RIP. Oh, I got a fucking review. Beep, 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 beep. I, don't, I don't got that. Burp, burp, dip, down. I watched a movie. Now I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> uh, we have fun here on the show. I'm trying to do something to kill the time. I'll review one of these reviews. You know what? Review my fucking a hole. How about that, Doc? What? Oh, fucking spread cheeks and you can review my fucking a hole. Huh? Review my fuck. 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 Review my butthole. Review my butthole. There we go. Revealer is a Shudder exclusive movie, which means you're only seeing it on Shudder, or maybe you'll see it in a theater or on Turing. But it's on Shudder. And it was pretty good. I was just looking for something to watch with the wife, and we came across the trailers, looked interesting. And the best way I could describe a uh, Revealer. I give the review a five out of five. The bajo, a big one. This guy. Uh, it's an apocalypse movie with a budget. Uh, it has a clever way that deals with apocalypse. I mean, it's almost similar to uh, Cloverfield Lane, I guess, in this context. But it start. It takes it. I don't remember what town it is because you don't even see the fucking town. You're immediately into this porn sex shop that has booths with a character who you know is a stripper, I guess, and the peep boops. Peep, 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 the peep, the peep, the peep boops. The peep and boops. Yo, oh, 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 peep, boop, peep, 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 peep. Damn, bro, am I broken? Brick, 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 You know, she's doing her job, and then all hell breaks loose outside, and uh, this other lady, picture with the glasses, is was outside protesting a sex shop, you know, one of those evangelical Christian super... Actually, they don't mention which kind of Christian she is, but... So they are stuck side by side in this sex shop trying to figure out what is going on and how they can get out. Uh, it's an interesting premise. And it honestly felt... Danny.xs stopped working. Who's that? Is that me? They work together and, uh... I feel like a majority of the movie is spent in the little sex shop, which eh. by the time they get somewhere new, it doesn't last long. Honestly, the movie doesn't last very long. Uh, by the time you want to see what's going on outside, the movie is over. But there is there is a pretty cool kind of answer in the end credits. So I'm going to give Revealer 7 out of 10. It, it's something. It, it's got an old school feel. Some, some nice, a little bit gore. Not a lot. Interesting premise. Interesting characters. Interesting dynamic. But check it out. If you don't shut it and you haven't watched it yet, check out Revealer. Check it out. Check it out. 7 out of 10. It's not bad. 7 out of 10. This is unreal. Oh, how could you? I'm just being a 7 out of 10 is, ain't bad. People is a stigmata to 7 out of 10. It's not it's not a bad review, alright? Alright, I gave you the it's the fucking score. It's not changing, alright? You know what you know what's you know, what, you know I got something for you. I got something for you that's gonna upset you. I got something for you that's gonna upset you. We'll get, I'll get back to you, Doc. Calm down. Calm down. Have a fucking sandwich or something. Calm down. You're getting really fucking agitated. I'm getting really fucking agitated. That's fucking Paddington. But guess what, folks? If you happen to buy Paddington on your PlayStation, well, I got some bad news for you. PlayStation is removing Studio can can Canal movies from their customers' libraries. 
Earlier today, on July 7th, Flat Panels HD reported PlayStation's Germany and Australian sites were updated with new notices. The news revealed that customers that on August 31st, all their purchased Studio Canal movies would be completely removed from their libraries. And as of August 31st, due to our revolving license agreements with content providers, you will no longer be able to view your previously purchased Studio Canal content. It will be removed from your video library. The notice was from the PlayStation in Germany, Australia needs. This means if you purchase movies like John Wick, Apocalypse Now, and Django Saw and the Hungry is you will lose access to your purchase at the end of August and you just got one month to make the most of your previous purchases before they're gone forever, including Paddington. Remember, back in March 2021, Sony Review would be removing the option to purchase and rent movies via the PlayStation Store come August of that year. And at the time, Sony reassured customers that they would still have access to any movies they previously purchased. Today's March, the first time Sony has walked back in that pledge, you like users couldn't access the movies they paid for, and Studio Connect publishes a wild left of movies around the world. It is, in fact, owner of the third largest film library in the world. Studio Connect. Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, good pattern to carry them. So, this story is... I'm about to go on a rant here, so... Here's a fucking warning. First, I'm gonna give this warning. Smoke, 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 weed. Smoke, Damn, son, where'd you find this? Smoke, smoke, weed. But. This is something I've probably ranted on here several times. And if I haven't, here we go. It feels. I don't know where, where it started. One could say Netflix, let's say Netflix. But it feels like for years now, we've been tricked. A great majority, not everybody, I guess. There's still people that believe in physical. But a great majority of us have been tricked into subscriptions, have been tricked into not owning things. You know, everything is a fucking subscription. Shows the majority of stuff you buy is digital and it's tied to one machine and you can never resell it and now people who bought that money on these fucking movies on their playstation come august 31st they are gone no more paddington no more hunger games no sicario or a plethora of movies Fucked. No Fucked. one says no to me. I didn't think I would. This fucked. Fucked, folks. I, I don't know. Uh, the reason I don't own physical is like my life's just. <laughs> I'm just. I don't. I guess I haven't really settled somewhere. I don't know if I want to settle in one place. Hey, Nwenzo, welcome, welcome, buddy. Yo, hey, well, welcome to the big teddy bear of a guy, Nwenzo88. He held hands and watched fireworks from his rooftop on 4th of July. I don't kiss and tell. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you for the, thank you for the sub. Thank you, appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll send you some free cards in a bit. Play your cards. I've been sending you free cards. You got free cards. All right. What was I? What is this? What was I? We go. Studio Canada. You're not gonna own play. They're tricking you with subscriptions. They're tricking you into not only stuff. They're, they're tricking you with not uh, all this digital shit. Got people does. Apparently, Nwenzo fucking kisses and tells. What a fucking shock. Can't keep things fucking to yourself, this guy. Hey. <laughs> well, I, had a, I was going somewhere with some of this. I was going somewhere with some of this. Uh, not owning stuff. Why don't I own physical stuff? If I'm, if I'm aware that that was a question someone asked. No one asked that. That's just a question I asked myself. Pre-questioning. 
pre argony Anyway, let, let's not get into my method on this tonight. Oh, it'll be all night. Oh, if you pl someone plays another stand-up card, we get into it. Next, you know they'll be watching and listening to you, sending you advertising for things you actually want. They do that already. Or, uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something right now to my Canadian friends that are watching, Doc, or whoever else is watching. I don't pay for YouTube. Over there in Canada, we get ads every a song or two. Here in the U.S., on YouTube. There's an ad between every fucking song, every fucking video. There's so much more ads. It's insane. Anyway, let's get back to some fucking new reviews. Yeah, they triggered you the subscription. Anyway, if you want, if you got Paddington, the, if you bought Paddington the Bear on a on your PlayStation 3 or 4, better watch it because come August 31st, they're going to take Paddington Bear away from you. <laughs> Ah, this one's for Sneaky if he's still there. Sneaky! Ubisoft just announced a Division Resurgence. It's Ubisoft's new MOBA's mobile game, so you can play Division at work when shit's not working. Uh, let's see, we got a little details on this. Uh, I hate when they take the bear away from me. Well, they gotta take it. They gotta keep on taking your bears away from you. Uh, Division Resurgence is a free-to-play game coming to the iOS and Android. Like the first game, Resurgence is set in New York City after the viral outbreak, but with a new and independent storyline, Ubisoft confirmed that Resurgence will offer a unique perspective on key story events that may have taken place in both the Division and its sequel, Division 2, which launched in 2019. Like the first two installments, Time Clash Division allows players to explore open world where they can roam freely and the protective zero and the blood blah, 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 blah. Resurgence is not the only game set in the Division universe. Currently in development, Ubisoft announced the Division Heartland, a free-to-play game by the original Tom Clancy developer Red Storm. You're really going ham into Division. God damn. They, uh, really buckling down. I love like, it, it, it takes place with events from Division 1. You got mail. The hey, Dr. Daddy, listen to me. Fuck. Paddington Bear is not too happy with your slander and misinformation. Keep Paddington Bear's name out of your mouth before he enters it. Real fast. Paddy Fox. Sorry, Paddington. If you feel a certain way, I woke him onto the show to a show for a friendly discourse. And a personal apology from me. Come on my show, Paddington. Alright? I apologize. Hey, what else I got? News reviews. News we got the sword guy. I think we do everything. Oh, we fucking did everything. What is this picture here? What is, I got a picture of some here. Division, oh, Terminator. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll be on soon. All right. We got church together. Ah, oh, ain't you? Ain't you a bunch of fucking sweethearts over here? Ain't you a bunch of fucking sweethearts? All right, that was news and reviews. As always, folks, if there's any headlines you would like me to cover or talk about here on the show, send them to my social medias. Uh, I mostly check my Instagram messages and my Twitter messages the most. Check them out there. Last Respawn Show on Instagram and Last Respawn on Twitter. As far as reviews go, there's a card for that. And I hope, I really hope Dr. Daddy gets it because I have not watched any of the Paddington movies. So there's another gold for your nuggets. 